So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to paint this beehive illustration in Procreate. This is a simple project that you can paint with any brushes, but I'll list the exact ones I'm using in the description below. So I'm going to start by painting the hive first. So for the brush, I'm going to use the abstract round, and I'm going to choose a very deep orangey yellow tone like this. And there's a little bit of a trick to this, but to start here, I'm just going to use light pressure, kind of taper it down, and then create a shape like this. Next, I want to build on uh, several more layers of this hive, but I don't want my brush strokes to kind of overlap. So what I'm going to do is mask everything off using the selection tool. So for that, I'll grab the selection tool, set to automatic, and I'm just going to select the white area out here. Then I can go immediately back to the brush, still set to the abstract round, and I can use it to build on another layer. And what I usually do is I'll do kind of one pass with quite a bit of pressure, and then I'll go over it again, just on the edge here, to give it a kind of shadow. Then I'll go out of the selection tool, go back, set it to automatic, and basically repeat the process. And once the hive is roughed out like this, I want to clean up the edges. So I'm going to grab the eraser brush, which is set to the fine liner pen. And I'm just going to use this to smooth everything out. After that, I'll shrink the brush size for the eraser. I'll zoom in, and then I'm going to undercut some of the ledges or layers in this hive. Next, I'm going to move on and add the honeycomb texture, and that's going to be on a separate layer above the hive. For the color, I'm going to choose a slightly darker version of our yellow tone. Maybe I'll make it a little bit more orange. And for the brush, I'm going to switch to the fine liner pen. Now there's a little bit of a trick to this. If I use the uh, pen here at a medium size and just dot it, it creates very consistent dots. But the larger the brush size is for this fine liner pen, the more unstable it is. So actually what I'm going to do is raise the brush size almost to the max. And then you can see now when I dot, there's a lot more variation there uh, in the actual size of the dot. And I'm going to go over it just like this, doing rows and rows of these random dots. And there we go. After this first layer here is filled in, I'm going to switch back to the eraser, which is still set to the fine liner pen as well. And I'm going to use this to erase back the dots wherever they went over the edge. After that, I'll go back to my brush, same large size, and I'll do another row of dots on the next kind of layer in the hive. But uh, for this first layer, I did them like this. I'm going to try to do each layer kind of differently. So this time, I'm going to do them at an angle. Once again, I'll switch back to the eraser brush and use it to clean up any of the dots that went beyond the edge. And I'm just going to repeat this process again and again until each part of the hive has this honeycomb texture. And once the honeycomb texture is finished, I recommend setting the transparency mode of that layer to multiply. Then you can adjust it and maybe you lighten it if you need to. I think that looks pretty good. And once you're happy with it, just go ahead and merge it together with the hive. Now before I move on and paint the bees, I want to add a couple of highlights to bring out some depth. So for that, I'm going to grab the selection tool and set it to freehand. And I'm just going to select a somewhat geometric area kind of on each part of the hive. Then I'll go to Hue, Saturation, and Brightness, and I'll brighten it. And I'll repeat this process and add maybe three or four highlights, just more towards one side of the hive. And with the hive finished, we can finally move on and paint the bees. And those are going to be on their own blank layer above the hive. For the brush, I'm going to continue using the fine liner pen, and I'm going to change my color to a very dark tone like this. And to start, I'm just going to paint a couple of little shapes like this. After that, I'll change my color to a much brighter yellow tone. I'll shrink my brush size, and I'll use that to add a couple of lines to each bee. After that, I'll change my color to a lighter and brighter yellow, and I'll go over it again. 
So at this point, I want to kind of blur and blend all these at the same time. And I'm going to do that with the Gaussian Blur tool. But if I use it just like this, you can see it softens the edge of the bee and it doesn't quite look right. So I'm going to undo that. And to kind of mitigate that effect, I'm just going to tap on the bee layer. And I'm going to set it to alpha lock just for a minute. And you'll notice when I use Gaussian Blur this time, it blurs only the inside of the bee and it doesn't mess with the outer edge. So I'm going to blur this just a little bit. There we go. After that, I'll make sure to turn alpha lock back off. Now I want each bee to be a little bit fuzzy and spiky, and this is really easy to do with the liquify tool. So I'll go back to my adjustments, go to liquify, I'll set it to crystals. You can copy my settings here, and I think I'll set the size around 40%. And if I zoom in, you can see if I scribble around this bee, it kind of fluffs it up and spikes it. And I really like how that looks, so I'm going to do that to each bee. And once the body of the bees are finished like this, we can move on and paint the wings. So for the color, I'm going to choose a very light warm gray tone. I'll continue with the fine liner pen at a pretty small size. And I'm just going to draw on the wings uh, somewhat randomly like this. And to finish up the wings, I like to add a little bit of texture. So I'm just going to darken my wing color a little bit. I'll shrink my brush size. And I'm just going to scribble a little bit on each wing. So at this point, I've only got 9 bees painted. And I think I need maybe 30 or 40 of them to finish this illustration. So instead of drawing more bees, I'm just going to duplicate that layer. I think maybe 4 times will be enough. After that, I'll merge all four B layers together onto one, and then I can use the selection tool set to freehand to manually select each B individually and then move it into position. And this definitely takes a little bit of time, but I think it's well worth it. One thing that really helps me when I place the bees like this is I try to imagine they're sort of orbiting the hive. And there we go, I think that looks really good. Now at this point the illustration could be totally finished, but there's a finishing touch that uh, you might want to try. Basically what I want to do is kind of draw a beekeeper in the background, sort of holding the hive, and that's super easy to do. I'm just going to zoom out here, I'll select both layers, the bees and the hive, and I'll position them a little bit better. There we go. After that I'll make a layer above the hive. For the color, I think it looks nice if I use a sort of bluish gray tone. And for the brush, I want something scratchy, so I'm going to use the little pine brush in the drawing tab. And I'm just going to use this to sketch out a very simple character in the background. And once I'm happy with how this looks, I want to increase the contrast of the gloves where they overlap the hive. And a creative way of doing that is simply inverting the colors. So I'm going to make sure the layer with our character there is selected. Then I'll grab the selection tool set to freehand. And I'm just going to isolate all the areas that overlap. There we go. I'll reconnect it. Then I can go to Hue, Saturation, and Brightness. And I'm just going to raise the brightness of those areas to 100. And just like that, this illustration is finished. As you can see, I did end up redrawing the beekeeper in the background using a larger brush size. I felt like he was a little bit too faint and hard to see at first. If you like painting simple projects like this, here are two more tutorials that I think you'll love to watch next.